Grade 5 math number 44. Multiply decimals. Where does the decimal point go? We can know the place of the decimal before we, we even multiply. We just count the hops. This is our place value. Here's ones, tenths, hundreds, thousands. So keep this in mind that we move farther to the right as we get into the decimal points, place values, okay? We had 1.4 1 and 4 tenths times 2.3, 2 and 3 tenths. When multiplying decimals, it's much easier to stack them. It's a little harder to do it this way. If we stack them, we can multiply as if the decimal points aren't even there. Then, when we're finished, we count the hops over from this side of the ones place, or the tenths or whatever, from this side, we count the hops over, and however many hops we make to the decimal points is how many hops over it is in the answer. See? One hop, two hop, one hop, two hop. We know it's three and twenty-two hundredths. But what's happening? Why does this work? All right, well, let's move the decimal point around. Instead of 1.4 and 2.3, Let's make it a full 14 and a 2.3. Then, when we do the same multiplication, we only have one hop. That means the answer is 32 and 2 tenths. So it changed from the 3 and 22 hundredths. See that? Because we only did one hop. Well, we're multiplying the 2 and 3 tenths by 14 full times. If we had 14 hundredths times 2 and 3 tenths, We'd have the same numbers, but the hops would be different. We'd have one, two, three hops. One, two, three hops. And the decimal point would go in front of the three. We'd have 322 thousandths. What if there was a decimal point in front of both numbers? Now the hops are one, two, three, four hops. We'd have to add a zero before being able to put the decimal point in. What is going on? Why is this happening? Every time we multiply a number by 10, it grows 10 times bigger, right? You have two orange jelly beans. We multiply it 10 times, it's going to make 20 jelly beans, right? We moved the left, we moved to the left one place value to the tens place because we multiplied by 10. So the two got shoved from being by itself it got shoved over away from the fictitious decimal point. When you write a 2, it looks like this, right? There's actually a decimal point on that side of it. When we multiplied it by 10, we moved the 2 away from the decimal point one space. And what's my rule? Do you guys remember my rule? In math, zeros have no value. They're just placeholders, right? So, in order to hold its place, that it got moved to the next place value, we stuck a zero in there to help us. Just like we did down here when we had to add the decimal point for it hops over, we had to put a placeholder there to show that there was something there, okay? So, we added this zero and moved the two over into the next place value, into the tens place. That's how you should look at this that it got moved over to the next place value and that a zero got stuck there to hold it there to keep it from falling back next to the decimal point. See? The zero's going, you stay there. Now, if we have two tenths and we multiply it ten times, it's going to move it over to the ones place. See? It's going to move it to the other side. Just as this moved to the tens place, this two tenths is going to move over here to the ones place because we multiply it by 10. See? It gets shoved over one time. So now it's sitting up next on this side of the decimal point instead of on this side. See that? All right, but when we multiply by a tenth or a hundredth, so now we have a decimal and a decimal, what happens is it moves our number farther right, farther this way, away from the decimal point. So if we multiply two tenths by one tenth, it's going to be two-tenths. Two-tenths times one-hundredth becomes, I'm sorry, this is uh, two-hundredths. Two 
If we multiply two tenths by a hundredth, it becomes two thousandths. See? This becomes two hundredths because we've got two hops. One, two. So when we put our two down here, we got to hop twice. Look at that. So when you see a hop and a hop, before we even write the answer, we can just look at this and say, I see one hop and two hops. There's going to be two hops in the answer. In this one, I see one hop, two hops, three hops. There's going to be three hops in the answer. That's how we can know where the decimal point is going to be before we even multiply. Before we even start, we know where it's going to go because we can count the hops into, in the equation and we know that's where it's going to go in the answer. All right? But do you, if you're still confused why this is happening, let me explain some more. The amount of hops that we counted over moved the numbers farther into the decimal place values. It moved it farther away from this decimal point, farther this way into the place values of decimals because we multiplied a decimal by a decimal. This little card has a hundred squares on it, okay? And we're going to pretend that that whole card, all the hundred squares, represents one. One item, one horse, one elephant, one box of cookies, one something. It's just one. We're going to split it into bars of seven tenths. So if you can see, there's ten squares coming down here like this. There's also ten squares going across this way. You know, 10 times 10 is 100. That's why there's 100 boxes here. So, going this way, we filled in boxes going up 7. Do you see that? Here's 3 left. That would have made 10 if we had gone all the way to the top. So they're only filled up 7 tenths of the way. See? So, we're going to multiply it by 6 tenths. That means we're going to do it 6 times this way, but in tenths, okay? Seven tenths, six tenths of the time ends up being 42 of these little squares are colored in out of the hundred of them. It makes a fraction of 42 of the hundred are colored yellow, or 42 hundredths, see, 0.42. We count the hops, one, two. There's two hops, one, two, 42 hundredths. All right, well, look at this. This one was seven tenths times six tenths. What happens if we do, only, we do a full six? Well, here's seven tenths of the card filled in six times. Can you see the difference between this one little card multiplied by six tenths of the time? and seven-tenths multiplied six times. Now this card is filled in seven-tenths of the card is filled in, but we did it six times. Now there's 70 parts out of 100 that are filled in on each one of these cards that we have to multiply six times. That means 70 times six is 420 little squares are filled in. 420 of these little squares are colored yellow. Out of 100 that are on each card. Well, now we have an improper fraction, don't we? And if we undid this improper fraction, it would come out to 4.2. Because we'd have four full hundreds with 20 hundreds left over, right? So we could even say it's like that. If we did the math this way, we would have 7 tenths times a full 6. There's no decimal point, so we only have one hop. We do one hop, and we're at 4.2. See? 4 and 2 tenths. The amount of hops moves the numbers out of the decimal place values when we multiply a decimal by a whole number. It's moving it out of the decimal place value. When we multiplied it by a decimal, it moved it into the decimal place value. So the whole number is helping it move towards the whole numbers. The decimal helps it move more into the decimals. If we filled the cards in completely like this, so it was one entire card filled in. 
and we did seven of these cards, seven ones, and then we multiplied this by six, we would have 42 full cards colored in like this. I didn't have enough cards to do it. I didn't have enough room on my board to tape them up. But we would have 42 cards that were completely filled in like this if there was no decimal point. By putting one decimal point in, we end up with this. By having two decimal points in our equation, we end up this small. See? Can you imagine how tiny it would be if it was seven hundredths by seven hundredths? Or six hundredths? Seven hundredths would be just seven little squares filled in out of this hundred. See? It'd be much tinier. It would be 4.2 of these squares would be filled in. That's how tiny it would be. So, that is why we can know the place of the decimal before we even multiply by just counting the hops in the equation. And that's why counting the hops works. It's going to be the easiest part of multiplying decimals for you, counting hops. Your teachers may not completely like it, but they'll, they won't mind it if you can explain to them that you know that when you multiply a decimal by a decimal, it puts it farther into the decimal places, and when you multiply a decimal by a whole number, it moves it out of the decimal places. If you can remember that, they won't mind you hopping, okay? As long as they know that you understand why you're hopping, that's the big deal. That's what they want to know. All right, I'll see you next video. I hope this really put a light bulb over your head. Keep up the good work. Bye.